Welcome, welcome to this Thirsty Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. Oh, wait, we're not on Newsmax TV. I'm so used to saying that. We are on Biz TV, um, where we'll be for the uh, a long time, hopefully. And, uh, you know, you got to check out uh, Biz TV. You got to go to the BizVod app, B-I-Z-V-O-D, to learn all you need to know about Biz and all the great shows like Business Rockstars and all that other stuff. Um, fantastic day to have a drink because uh, we just got those jobless numbers and they continue to climb uh, in some instances steeper than even the, uh, the spike in the uh, coronavirus uh, death count. Um, what we need, hang on one second, what we need to do is, uh, you know, take a little, take a close look inside the numbers. Uh, watching CNBC here, trying to keep my eye on. Even though the jobless numbers were terrible today, um, today's numbers are another 3.2 million people put in claims for unemployment insurance, bringing the total since mid-March to 33 million Americans. Not a good sign. Some ominous signs coming out of the PPP program today, as I mentioned to you a couple of weeks back, we need to be focusing on small business. 80% of the workforce is employed by companies that are identified as small businesses, okay? Under 100 million in revenue, under 100 employees, those are small businesses. That's 80% of the workforce out there, okay? And in the PPP program, there are 30 million companies in America that qualified as a small business for the PPP program. As of today, 1.7 million companies actually got some funds at an average of about 150,000 a company. So uh, 30 million small businesses, 1.7 million, uh, like just about 5% of all the small businesses in the whole country got money from the PPP program. Other people are getting unemployment. Other people are getting a $1,200 check. There are emergency disaster loans. But the bottom line is this. Uh, over 90% of the small businesses in America have been closed for the better part of the last 60 days. And it continues to spin my head along with many rational, insane-thinking people, especially on social media, and I get rid of the wackos on my page. But people are wondering, why is Walmart allowed to be open? Uh, why is... Shop and stop allowed to be open. Why are these big stores allowed to open? How come their people are allowed? But a small store where you could certainly have a lot more control over the traffic coming in and out of the store, uh, why aren't they allowed to be open? And it continues to boggle my mind that the government is calling balls and strikes on what businesses can be open. Every single person that owns a business, even the smallest of businesses in this country, decided at some point that they wanted to be an entrepreneur that they wanted to be a risk taker, okay? And the risk was taking money out of your pocket or your savings or selling some stocks or taking some money out of the 401k or taking a loan and starting a business. That's the risk. The reward is your idea, your service, your relationships are gonna bring you more money in the long run than what you risked to start it all up. So everyone who owns a small business is already a risk taker, okay? Now, we've got past the spike we're still in a pandemic. We all realize that this is worse than the flu, um, but the numbers are still right in the range right now as the regular common flu, okay? And, uh, you know, there's been some highly, uh, highly, highly uh, debated stuff out there on what the actual death count is. We'll get to that a little later on. Um, we're going to take a quick break right now. My partner, Frank Morano, is going to join me right after this, as well as Mark Bernstein, physical therapist and the author of The Physical Therapy Solution. 